Hello. You know who I am. And if you don't, well, doesn't really matter. This video is about watering plants. Um, now, in this current drought, um, which doesn't seem to be stopping, um, as you've seen by other posts, I've adopted pipe and bottle feeders. Pipe feeders are really, really simple. Um, I'm doing this in a video just to see if it's any easier for you to understand. You probably do, but for those that don't, more than anything, what I'm meaning is like, like this kind of pipe, plastic pipe, and you just knock it into the ground, quite simply knock it into the ground. Um, you might want to rub a mallet at first, um, and then you just pour your water in here and you pour it in until it reaches the top and allow it to go down sometimes it might be a bit slow to start with depends on how dry your soil is and if you pull it out a little sometimes the water will shoot through faster you'll know when it's too much because the water will start coming to the surface the point of this to start with is just to get the nearest plants um, to accept it as the new water source um, you have to excuse me, I've not done a video for a long time. I'm going to show you the other method, and the other method is a drip feeder. And that is really simple as well. Um, it's not keeping the plants perfect, but it is helping them survive. And since we've been drip feeding them, there has been growth on these plants, like with the thyme there. Um, and a little bit of growth on the rosemary um, this tree here uh, is or was dying but there is still green up on the top so the drip feeder um, which is there and the pipe feeder used combined seems to be helping the tree survive not perfect what it is surviving. There is green still up in the top of the canopy of the hawthorn. Whether it works completely or not remains to be seen. It may be too late in the day for that. Again, over here, you'll see I've put the pipe feeder in. I've put two of them in, one either side. Um, the point really is now that people want to be doing this now for it to take effect you need time for the roots to grow towards the water sources and before there ends up being a hose pipe ban um, it might be an idea for people to take these ideas and start applying them now right okay ladies and gentlemen this is just showing you the fact that these bottles have been run across this hedge line like so, like so, sorry, and they are drip feeding this out hedge, I'm getting bitten, this privet hedge, and they are keeping it alive, and they're keeping them from wilting, and there is also the pipe feeding, um, you won't be able to see just yet, just hang on a second, See, I've put these pipes in as well, nearby where these trees are. So that when we're watering, we're basically just trying to give them something. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to water these. Really, really simple, as we have here, the pipe method. Now, just to be clear, when you are first putting them in, you bang them in with a rubber mallet. Um, you only need something yay long and it just needs to be a few inches into the ground so it sends the water deep enough rather than sitting on the surface. Right, so we just pour it in and if you've got it right it'll be that happy medium of where it's soaking down into the ground and not just sitting in the pipe. The one on the right is an example of quite good pouring actually to be fair. Some are going to be slower than others, but then that depends on the ground you've got and the root systems around you. Don't get me wrong, I'm not a professional in any stretch of the imagination when it comes to gardening or anything else. 
I'm just trying to do my bit to help people understand there are methods and ways around causing a hosepipe ban, shall we say, and other ways of watering plants which don't require quite so much water being used. See, there we go. So the water just sits in the top there and that'll slowly release down. You might be able to see it going. Uh, not quite sure. If I do it again. Right. Okay, that's slowly going down. Which is not a bad thing if you have one fast and one slow. Because one sends the water down quickly, the other one sends the water down slower. Eventually, the roots will form around the bottom and it's a way of creating your new water source. The point of me doing this video now is to try and encourage you people to do these things now because if you do them now they'll be more effective by the time a host pipe band comes in should one choose to come in. Right, okay, so we have empty bottle and you may see it around the edges there are tiny bits of root in the soil that have formed where this has been filled previously. So you take your bottle, you fill it up with water, like so. So right, I'm trying to do this one handed so it is a bit awkward. Some will cry, waste of water, <laughs> he missed the bottle. Right, okay, yeah, whatever. Anyway, so you filled your bottle, right? Now you put it in the ground as quick as you can. And just with the back of your hand, just give it a push in, make sure it's in. And then, if you've got it right, you'll see the water spinning around inside. And you can always just pull it out a little bit to start it bubbling, but not too much, just a tiny bit, like that. I don't know whether you saw that, but two bubbles come up and it'll slowly start releasing the water into the base of the plant. Okay, so these are a third version, which is basically a plastic bottle with little nail holes down the sides nearest where you want the water to go. Um, but really simple, again, you just bury the bottle so it's up to neck height and you quite simply just pour your water into the bottles, filling them up. Yeah, you might miss a bit, but you basically just fill the bottle up and it slowly goes down and releases the water out to the soil underneath. Just as a quick idea for you anyway. Um, and that's it. Thanks. Bye. Here's another tip. And we have a bee hole there and some sugar water using milk bottle lids I know it's not the necessarily the uh, well it looks like ants are in it at least ants are enjoying themselves in it um, but we do need to add sugar water out in our gardens um, because bees are starting to die and due to the lack of rain and water um, some of you may think that this is a bit of paranoia. Oh, it's going to rain on Friday. Well, we've been saying that for the last few weeks. The point is, we do these things to avoid disaster. So is it not better to act now than to wait until a disaster's happened before we turn around and go, Oh, maybe we should do something about this. <laughs> Too late then. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, um, another point I thought I should add. Looks like the ants are having a right good time. Um, anyway, there we go. Finally, uh, one more thing I may have neglected to mention. You can also add water in beard baths as well. Um, sugar water in beard baths, if I said that right the first time. It might just help to uh, give the birds a bit of energy. They're suffering as well. I've been feeding them three times a day and <laughs> still, they're uh, suffering because there's not enough food source out there. Right, hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> Point is, 
if you want to stop the drought causing so many problems then you people along with me and others need to get off our bottoms and do something not just sink our heads in the next TV programme or worry about what some politician says or the BBC says because none of them really have a clue what they're talking about half the time they just guesstimate the only people that are going to make a difference in this drought is us, the people and we're only going to do that when we stop sinking our heads in the sand running away to things like football, tennis, Coronation Street or Love Island, whatever you want to call it point is, stop burying your heads in the sand the countryside and the animals they need your help. They need your help because if we don't give them help, then we will suffer as well. If the bees die, we have no food because the bees pollinate the plants. If the birds die, well, any food you're growing gets attacked by pests and there's nothing to control the pests. And if those two things also happen, um, all the feeds that you feed your animals, well, they'll slowly disintegrate and all. So, if you really care about your pets, your other animals that you may keep on a small hold or anything like that, then now is the time to pay attention to the information I've given you. And it's not perfect, there are other solutions out there, it's up to you to look, find, put into action the things you find. Don't just sit on it and do nothing about it. And with that, I'll leave it. Thank you for your time. I've tried, that's all I can do. It's not perfect, but if you want perfection, well, maybe you need to go to the BBC, because I ain't the BBC. See ya!